Good evening, and welcome to Counterculture with Danielle D'Souza Gill. The culture has gone crazy, media has gone mad, and reason has become repugnant. Here, we focus on facts and how to fight back. Tonight, we're going to be talking about tech censorship at Google and speak to a former Google senior engineer turned whistleblower. If you can still stomach the stuff coming out of Hollywood these days, you may have noticed that American entertainment still hasn't bottomed out in terms of its decreasing levels of quality. You can't help but wonder if companies like Amazon and Netflix are in a competition to see who can produce the most stomach-churningly tasteless tripe. Just when you think it can't get any worse, along comes the next offering, and somehow it is worse. More character race swaps, more dominating women who increasingly feel at ease belittling and outperforming male heroes. The plots are bad and writers sometimes take pains to mock their own audiences with both subtle jabs and overt fourth wall breaking commentary. And to add further insult, this is how Hollywood now treats its most valuable properties with loyal followings. Gone are the days of old Hollywood when a decent studio and a competent director could apply some creative alchemy and forge the occasional masterpiece or cinematic work of art. But hope springs eternal, and it never hurts to keep an eye on modern entertainment, just in case. Which is why you might have heard about the Amazon series based on J.R.R. Tolkien's works called Rings of Power. The series has made a lot of waves. Not because it's good, but because it's eye-scorchingly bad. And despite costing nearly half a billion to produce and being touted as a make-or-break series for Amazon streaming services, it has failed in epic fashion. One of the big criticisms for the series concerns not its casting, but its writing. Plot lines are picked up and dropped at random, characters go through formative experiences only to adopt completely incongruous behaviors. At times, even the sympathetic characters display psychopathically cruel tendencies. There's no sense of space at times. People stroll from one end of the world to another without any sense of how much time should have passed for that trip to take place. When two characters talk, they don't respond to each other, but only emit what could only be charitably called stilted dialogue. The Rings of Power dared its viewers to make sense of it all or to like any of its characters. These are the qualities that led one video essayist on YouTube to hypothesize that the series wasn't written by human beings at all, but by artificial intelligence. The theory is supported by the script's soulless incoherence, but also a number of ways in which the events mirror other AI exercises in creating new prose based on Tolkien's Similarion. An AI-produced script could explain why the show failed to capture the true size of Tolkien's Middle-earth as a kind of program error called a world modeling failure. The AI could also explain why the certain passages only sound profound, such as the explanation that stones sink in water because stones, quote, only seed downward. It's the literary equivalent of an uncanny valley. It only seems wise until you examine the concept and realize it. Our video essayist also points out the lack of writing experience on the part of the showrunners. No one in their right mind would hire such unproven talent to helm such a high-stakes venture. And speaking of money, Amazon ran a robust ad campaign for Rings of Power. Part of that campaign was to aggressively intimidate viewers into having a positive opinion of the show in order to avoid being labeled racist or misogynist. It's almost as if they knew it was going to be as unnervingly off-putting and wanted to psychologically condition viewers into ignoring its glaring flaws. Then there's the show itself, which relied heavily on computer-generated effects for its backdrops and creatures. This flies in the face of the deeply revered Lord of the Rings movies, which used practical effects wherever possible. It's here that our essayist points out a possible motive for trying to deploy an AI for the writing process. If visuals like the backgrounds or even characters can be generated by AI from scratch with a high degree of realism, then the only component missing in the process would be the script. Once all the pieces are developed, what you have is a studio executive's dream. The ability to create an entire movie from script to production almost instantaneously from a few simple prompts. You don't have to deal with the conflicting creative visions of the writers and the directors. You never have to worry about what your artificial actors are saying on social media. 
And the best part is the process is quick. If you don't like a production, you can just order another one from the same AI. Cheap, quick, convenient, and no messy human beings to interact with. As far as analysis is concerned, this is as plausible as it is mundane. I mean, replacing humans with machines? That's been a thing since the advent of the industrial age. It's good reason to assume why a studio would want to develop a machine writer of fantasy movies. But it misses another very important selling point for using AI in creative endeavors, which is obedience. We already know that AI can do just about anything we want it to. But what's bound to please the woke studio execs is that if you tell them how to do something, it can only obey. But is this something people would actually do? The answer is that they've already done it. You may be familiar with the AI called ChatGPT. It's a program you can interact with through text. Ask it for anything from travel tips to relationship advice, and it will comply. Just don't ask it to use a racial slur, because even if that racial slur is the only way to stop a hypothetical nuke from striking a city and killing millions of people, ChatGPT will inform you that it is never permissible to use a racial slur. And just like any reliably leftist Supreme Court justice, ChatGPT also cannot define what a woman is, nor can it criticize women or minorities. It also can't praise conservatives like Lauren Boebert or Donald Trump. The AI has no problem, however, with criticizing white men or praising Joe Biden. Which means these quirky limitations are not bugs, but features. They are meant to be there. The programmers of ChatGPT want one of the most advanced, sophisticated systems of artificial intelligence in the world to also be a rigid adherent of loony leftist logic. In fact, it seems that wherever AI is being developed, there is a curious overlap with woke ideology. Another good example would be Google's machine learning fairness, which is responsible for sanitizing conservative ideas and sourcing from the search engine's results page. This is something that our guest today, Zach Voorhees, knows quite a lot about. He's a former Google programmer turned whistleblower who recently wrote a book on this topic. But before we dive into the interview, we might want to ask ourselves why wokeism and AI seem to be so closely associated. Is it because only an inhuman mind can embrace such an inhuman ideology? Or is it because it's the culmination of the dream to build the perfect super leftist by combining equal parts trivial knowledge with unswerving obedience? Either way, it reveals the programmer's insulting attitudes on what it means to be human. <laughs> 